So uh, on Monday, uh, Donald Trump had a uh, summit with Vladimir Putin. Uh, they had a news conference. And then, of course, there was a uh, private meeting, which we don't know uh, what happened. It was just uh, Putin and uh, Trump and the interpreters, which is kind of weird. Uh, but nonetheless, um, that happened. Uh, and during that uh, co press conference, of course, you had uh, President Trump basically bowing down very servile to uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, now, the result of this is a White House that is basically looking to pull the chute. Uh, now, Politico explains that President Trump's disastrous performance since his news conference alongside Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin has sent West Wing morale to its lowest level since the Charlottesville fiasco almost a year ago. So uh, Charlottesville is, of course, uh, there was uh, massive protests by white supremacists, neo-Nazi groups, uh, the Ku Klux Klan. They got together to uh, try to protect their southern Confederate heritage, right? Uh, now, that was the same rally wh where angry white supremacists were holding up tiki torches and screaming, Jews will not replace us. Now, that's the same place, the same uh, rallies and demonstrations and protests where Heather Heyer was murdered. She was ran over uh, when one of these white supremacists ran uh, their car into a bunch of counter protesters. So already not looking good. Uh, so the problem with that uh, and the reaction from the White House is you had President Trump basically saying, good people on both sides. No, you, you have white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and, and Klan members saying Jews will not replace us, blood and soil. You know, white supremacist uh, chants. And he's like, good people on both sides. I, you know, good people, good people. What are you talking about? So... When that happened, Gary Cohn, who is now gone, uh, but at the time, Gary Cohn, that day, was like, that's it, dude. I'm out of here. I'm, right, I'm, I'm writing my resignation letter. Uh, and he was convinced to stay. And then later on, during the tariff fight, he decided, okay, that's it. Now I've had enough. Um, that, was, that was what pushed me over the edge. It wasn't just the white supremacists, him siding with the white supremacists. It was the tariffs. Last straw. Final straw. Broke my back. Mm, wonderful. Uh, now, here's the thing, right? So that's what happened then. Uh, that's That was a pretty low point in the presidency. Now it turns out that this uh, Putin summit has actually gone even lower. Uh, according to one Republican close to the White House, the mood in the White House is basically people are just depressed. They continue saying, nobody wants to take on the public heat of resigning right now. But there are a bunch of people who were thinking maybe they'd leave after the midterms who are very seriously starting to consider accelerating their timetable. So basically, they're, they're looking around at this, this flaming ship, or you could like compare this to the fucking Hindenburg. Uh, it's on fire. It's going down. And they're looking around. They're going, so uh, when should I pull this ripcord? I mean, when's a good time to bail? Now's a pretty good time to bail. Now's the time. In fact, you probably should have never been in there if you had any sort of self-respect. But a lot of these people didn't and were like, I don't know. I can get connected. I can uh, build out my political resume. No, dude. Donald Trump is a black hole. He's got like the Midas touch, only everything he touches turns to shit. So it's like the turd touch. Uh, and so that includes your career. You're going down. So, again, he's a black hole. He sucks everything into it. That includes your career. Shit, there are people, there are Trump staffers in D.C. that can't even find a date. Because as soon as people learn that they're in the Trump administration, they're like, nope, I don't want anything to do with you. Uh, I'm, you might as well just swipe left. Get out of here. So, <laughs> look, they're looking around 
for a place to bail. They should have bailed a long time ago. But anyway, look, uh, Politico also notes, however, that the president's usual defenders, many of whom have been critical of him in public, and almost all of whom are privately disappointed by his performance, so everybody's not happy with him, say the following. While Trump's statements are regrettable, they have few, if any, policy consequences. I mean, see, no policy consequence. Oh, oh really? Um, here's a policy consequence. Donald Trump will not enforce the sanctions passed by Congress. Now, whether you disagree or not with those sanctions, they were passed by a majority. Even Republicans voted in favor of these sanctions against Russia. This is, uh, they, they voted in such a large amount that they could override a presidential veto. Donald Trump will still not put those sanctions into effect. He just won't do it. He's in the executive branch. He is supposed to execute the will of Congress. He's not doing so. So uh, that's kind of an example of this policy-wise. Not the statements himself, right? Uh, but as far as bowing down to uh, a, or I'm sorry, his performance, but he basically was bowing down for, to a foreign leader and being very, very deferential to him. Even putting our own intelligence uh, it, down and basically saying, no, no, you're right, Putin. America is stupid. We are weak. Uh, and our intelligence is wrong. And you guys are fantastic. In, in fact, uh, one of the arguments that was used by Putin to say that the hacking did not happen, our hackers are so good, you never would have found them. And Donald Trump says, oh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> That's a great argument. Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> You're right. Our intelligence agencies are so crappy and terrible that they could never find out if you hacked this, Vlad. So he's uh, basically was on an America Sucks tour. And yet, President Obama, to go back to uh, when he bowed just a little too far to the uh, Japanese prime minister. B bowed just a little too far. Republicans were outraged. Now Republicans, there was a recent poll where a huge majority of Republicans absolutely loved the summit. They approved of it. They couldn't get enough of it. Yes, bow down to that authoritarian. And now we bow down to you. So the president's usual defenders in the administration, um, well, again, are staying. This is people like Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and National Security Advisor John Bolton. Those people do have an impact on policy. So they're very, very unlikely to, stand, uh, to, to step down. In fact, they're going to double down and be like, no, it, the administration, uh, we're going to stay in the administration. Now, John Kelly, however, that, that is, uh, well, that's different, right? Because I don't even know, I'm not convinced that he'll even make it to the midterms. I think by the end of the summer, he's going to be out. He's, he's already been uh, basically cut off. They're having meetings without uh, John Kelly. And John Kelly is the chief of staff. But anyway, uh, he wouldn't be alone because turns out this administration has had incredibly high turnover. In fact, it's got the highest turnover of any presidency. I kid you not. This is according to an Associated Press analysis. The Trump administration has had a staff turnover in excess of 37% over the calendar year ending June 30th. That is just one year. In total, his entire administration, some 61% of Donald Trump's senior most aides have left the White House. <laughs> you know what the next highest was? It was actually Bill Clinton. Uh, Bill Clinton had 42% of his senior aides leaving the White House. Donald Trump took that record and shredded it. 61%, that is over half 
of all the people that have worked for Donald Trump in the White House that have resigned. And you know what? There's a lot of them that are facing criminal indictments. Oh, but it's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt. And after uh, Monday, the calls uh, for more mass resignations uh, continued. In fact, uh, here you have a New York Times columnist, Brett Stevens, uh, who on Thursday wrote an op-ed uh, saying that, hey, look, uh, assuming Mike Pompeo and Bolton still have their senses intact, they should resign following the epic disgrace of the U.S.-Russia summit in Helsinki on Monday. So should their senior staff. Now, I got to note that Brett Stevens knows and respects both men. Well, look, I, I don't uh, know, nor do I respect any of those people. And that, that includes Brett Stevens. See, here's the thing. Uh, Pompeo and Bolton are incredible extremists. They are neocons. They are war hawks. They are right-wing extremists. They're not going to leave. They're not going to resign. Come on. Not unless they get embroiled in any sort of scandal that makes the president look bad. But they're not. Uh, and so I think they're going to be there come hell or high water until somebody has to escort them out. Nonetheless, that brings me to another thing. If more staff get replaced, well, then they're, or, or, or I'm sorry, if they resign, they're going to get replaced by people who are basically even more sycophantic towards Trump. And if you think it's bad now, like because we already kind of have that already, it could get worse. In fact, Corey Schock, head of the International Institute for Strategic Studies, had urged staff that are already there to stay in. Uh, now, this was an op-ed wrote in The Atlantic. They said, we should not want the moral satisfaction and practical devastation of clearing out people of conscience and allow the president to replace them with more malleable or compromised people. I have to say, she does make an interesting point, uh, but overall I tend to think that anybody in the administration who's still there is already malleable and already compromised. But that's just me. But still, the administration has proven that even when you think you hit the bottom of the barrel, and I've thought that many times. Turns out that barrel just keeps getting deeper. Because at the end of the day, there is no bottom to it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.